Hello, I'm Ralph. I'm Dr. Jen. And I'm Paul. And this is Awesome Astronomy on YouTube. If you like what we're doing in this series, please do hit the subscribe button and like the show. And also check out the Awesome Astronomy podcast for tons more space science and astronomy talk. Oh boy, we're tackling the big one now. Why does the universe exist? And the simple answer is, we don't know. And we can probably never know. So let's just enjoy it while we're here. Now, of course, there's more discussion around this answer so it doesn't sound hollow or dismissive. But the real problem is that science will struggle with this question until it has a method to test it. And how do you test that? There's a nice aphorism that goes something like, astronomy is the study of what, astrophysics is the study of how, and cosmology is the study of when. But who answers the why? I mean, this is more the realm of philosophy and religion. And there's actually a branch of philosophy called empiricism that states that knowledge can only come from our sensory experiences. But that falls well short when we want to know why the universe exists or why we exist. Why implies motive, and the empirical evidence of that requires us to hear the testimony of someone who saw it happen or made it happen, which naturally then falls to religion, because every religion has its own creation story with its own creator. But this is faith-based, not evidence-based. Religions have a hypothesis that requires faith in that story regardless of any contradictory empirical evidence. Science starts with a hypothesis, but tests it and amends or discards it for a better hypothesis if the empirical evidence doesn't support it. So we find ourselves in a conundrum if we want to know the truth. Religion will give us answers, but we have no way of knowing if it's true, unless a deity comes down from the sky and confirms they created the world and gives us pretty compelling evidence to support that claim. Science, on the other hand, is really good at giving us reliable answers to mysteries and explaining exactly how the world works. But it's useless when it has no way to experiment and observe the outcomes. A giant of the Victorian Golden Age of Science, Lord Kelvin, is quoted as saying, There is nothing new to be discovered in physics now. All that remains is more and more precise measurement. And we can look back at that and laugh, because in less than 20 years, possibly the two greatest most influential discoveries in physics were made, relativity and quantum theory. But Kelvin was absolutely right to point out that the big frontier in science is getting ever more precise in our measurements to split the atom, build particle accelerators, see the first ever light from the birth of the universe, all require us to build greater and greater precision detectors and have ever more precision in our measurements. And astronomers today can now see the first light in the universe. What's known as the cosmic microwave background radiation. This is the energy created by the Big Bang and that's been imaged with ever greater precision since it was first detected by accident in 1964. And it tells us a lot about the universe in its earliest state. But nothing about the why... We can't see any further back than this because the early universe was a thick soup of explosive energy that wasn't transparent and didn't emit light. And we can't see what happened before the Big Bang because there was no before. Time, space, the laws of nature and the materials that created the scaffolding of the universe didn't exist. How can you see something that didn't exist? So there's no clues to be found by trying to look there. The only way we can have any understanding of the why, is if we hope for a science fiction reality. Could our universe have been created in a science experiment by beings of superior intelligence? Well, yes, but there's currently no way of testing it unless those scientists come down from the sky, confirm they created the world, and give us pretty compelling evidence to support that claim. Humanity can already clone animals or create new life forms in the lab, and we've only had the modern scientific method for 400 years, so it's likely that humanity will be able to create our own universes in a few hundred years, if not before. Alternatively, could the world we live in be a simulation like Elon Musk believes? Well, yes, but... Currently, there's no way of testing it unless those coders step into the matrix that we live in, confirm they created that code, and give us pretty compelling evidence to support that claim. 
Could this vast universe we observe actually be just one of an infinite number of tiny quantum particles that we only see as vast from our vantage point, like a version of Horton Hears a Who or Ant-Man? Yes, it could, but there's no way of testing it. We know that even in space or a perfect vacuum, all the time particles are popping into existence and colliding with their antiparticle twins, causing them to immediately evaporate in a puff of energy. The quantum world is weird but we can observe it to reveal just how weird it is. Well, there are serious cosmologists that think our universe started as one of these quantum particles popping into existence from nowhere, and purely by chance, after all, the quantum world is only governed by probability, it expanded too fast to evaporate and grew exponentially. If this is the case, we wouldn't expect ours to be the only universe either would expect there to be a limitless amount of universes. So if this could be tested and turned out to be correct, we could say the answer to why the universe exists is a quantum fluctuation or random chance, neither of which are satisfactory answers if you're the sort of person that's looking for meaning in the world. So you see where we find ourselves. We have to build speculation on speculation in order to arrive at a scenario that would allow a creator to tell us and be believed or for an untestable theoretical physics thought experiment to be true. And until either happens, we just can't know why the universe exists. Oh, and even then, the philosophers jump in to kick our legs from under us by posing the infinite regression question that, if that creator or quantum chance is why the universe exists, why is there a creator or quantum chance? And that way lies madness. Sometimes it's just best not to look under the rock. And if you liked this video, Awesome Astronomy is also available twice a month in podcast form. Why not check out our episodes using the links below? And if you like what we're doing in this series, do hit the subscribe button and like the show.